that moment when you realise you have four minutes of video and 38 seconds of audio because you should have changed the battery when it was on one bar but you thought you'd leave it. So I watched a vlog recently by Ted Forbes on the art of photography and he interviewed David Brookover. Thanks to Andrew for pointing me to the vlog. It was a very interesting one, I have to say. Um, towards the end of the, the vlog, David said something that really interested me. He talked about who you photograph for. I've always said, shade from the wind, I've always said, I photograph for me. Don't care what the people think about my photographs. Now I'm beginning to think that's a defence mechanism quite an insecure way of looking and reacting to what people think about my photography because if somebody says I don't like it I can always say well it's for me not you I don't care what you think if I was a professional paid photographer and my clients didn't like the photographs I produce I'd be in trouble but as an amateur photographer if people don't like my photographs it can it can hit you you know it can knock your ego um, because we all like our photographs to be liked. I've not quite formulated my thought process on exactly how I really feel about what he said, but it does make sense and he, 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 he makes, he draws an analogy between photography and making a food. The example he gives is if you make a meal for yourself, it'll be pleasant, it'll be edible, you'll eat it. You put some effort into it, but if you create a meal or you cook a meal for other people, he theorised that you'll put more effort into it because you want them to have an enjoyable meal, to have an enjoyable experience, to like the food they eat that you've cooked for them. We all like to do things that are nice for people. We all like to give people pleasure. Yeah, I'd be interested to know what you think about it. I know a lot of people do say, I take photographs of me. I don't care what other people think. Yeah, I'm actually beginning to move along the spectrum from purely me to purely others. Yeah, I'm probably just left of the centre mark at the moment. The one thing I'm going to struggle with, even if I do accept I'm photographing for other people, is how do you do that? How do you photograph for other people? You know, it's probably going to come, come across when I've actually had a good deal more thinking about it. As I said, I would like to hear your thoughts on David Brookovers, and I'll put a link to his vlog to the, to the video below. He's a very good photographer, by the way, very good indeed. It's towards the end of the vlog. Um, I'll put a marker to where it is so you can dive in and jump in, so you can get straight to it. A bit of cloud has developed. Did a bit of pinkness there, but I'm not going to take any photographs. Oh, falling over. As long as I don't fall that way, because it's a long way down. There's some mist in the valley. I'll be able to get rid of some of that with the DHA's slider in light room. But I think it's time I took some photographs because there are, I'm glad to say, quite a lot of cars still coming up and more importantly, down the valley. Anyway, see ya. I'm changing batteries next time, you plonker.